Hello everyone. In this learning objective, we discussed the purpose of industry analysis in equity valuation. We previously spoke about the top-down approach to security analysis, whereby we come up with a value of a stock by first making some prediction or forecast about the macroeconomy. We then move down to our industry level analysis before focusing specifically on the particular stock. So in this particular learning objective, we are at the middle stage. In order to analyze industry, the first thing we need to be able to do is to classify a particular industry or sector. There are various ways to do this. Uh, there are standard industry classifications, including uh, the standard industry classification and the North American industry classification system. But the most common one is GICS or the Global Industry Classification Standards, which is a joint uh, product of a Standard and Post and Morgan Stanley. What TICS codes do is that it's a way of allocating firms to some standardized industry and sector. So we can use GICS code as a way of identifying an appropriate industry within which a firm belongs. So for example, if you take a particular firm like uh, Commonwealth Bank or BHP Billiton, you can go to GICS code and can find out that what industry according to GICS code, these firms belong to. If you want to know more uh, information about this, you can visit um, ASX website, uh, Australian uh, Stock Exchange website. You will get more detail on this. So once we have identified the particular industry within which a firm operates, then comes uh, to the stage of analyzing the industry. The purpose of the industry analysis is to identify which industry will be good for investors and industry analysis further provide more granular information that we can fit into our forecast associated with expected future cash flows and the expected discount rate that we will use in our valuation model. So when analyzing industry, there are several areas that should be addressed or considered. We consider the vulnerability of external shocks uh, in the business cycle, the competitive structure in the industry, permanence, the phase of the life cycle, regulatory and tax conditions, and industry financial data and performance. So starting with sensitivity to business cycle, there are three factors that affect how sensitive an industry will be to the business cycle. First of all, a sensitivity of sales. Here we are looking at the extent to which sales in an industry co-vary with the business cycles because we know that some industries, let's say luxury goods industry or premium cars are going to have very high sales when the economy is expanding because people have more disposable wealth. But their sales are going to decrease quite significantly when the economy gets entrapped. So having a much greater sensitivity of sales across the cycle demonstrates the fact that these industries are more risky. The second measure is operating leverage. Operating leverage is the proportion of fixed cost in the total cost structure of a farm. A higher fixed cost indicates the inability to either scale up or scale down the production when there is a period of expansion or contraction. Hence, industries with high operating leverage tend to be risky across the cycle. We can measure degree of operating leverage as one plus uh, the ratio of fixed cost to profit. Firms that have higher operating leverage, uh, that is a higher fixed cost, are riskier. Financial leverage is a measure of debt to capital, uh, debt in the capital structure. Industries that have greater debt and higher financial leverage are going to be industries that are more cyclical. This is because we know that higher debt means higher fixed obligation to make interest payments regardless of the performance. So when uh, the economy begins to contract, there is a greater risk that those industries might default because they are using higher level of debt, whereas the economy, whereas when economy expands, debt can be cheaper, therefore those firms can benefit from their exposure to debt. So industries that have high sensitivity to sales, higher operating leverage, 
and higher financial leverage tend to vary more with the business cycle. Therefore, these industries tend to be more risky. Another related consideration is the vulnerability to external shocks. There is risk that procedural actions by government might have a significant impact on industry, or some industries may heavily depend on external resources or commodities. In the later case, a change in the commodity price, for example, a big increase in oil price that's happening in the recent time, could have a much greater effect on some industries than others because those industries might be more vulnerable, vulnerable to external shocks. Also, industries potentially subject to fashion trends that may soon change. So any of these potential shocks, government shocks, or shocks to the price of external resources, or shocks associated with changing tests will affect some industries more than others. And this is another reason for us to examine where, when we are trying to identify the degree of sensitiveness of an industry to business cycle. Another reason that we look at in terms of industry is that an analysis of whether an industry is likely to be viable in the future. So we need to examine the competitive structure of the industry. This is a question of how competitive the industry is currently, what is the degree of saturation, how many different marketplaces are there within the industry, and how this industry has changed over the time. Another way to examine the competitive structure is identifying whether there are barriers to entry, whether there are forces that prevent new entrants into the market. Example of this might be the telecommunication industry. The telecommunications industry requires huge upfront capital investment to enter into the industry, so which actually is going to create a barrier to entry. Another issue to consider is permanence of the industry. Permanence is the question of whether an industry is likely to survive in the long run. Permanence has been a really important issue that has affected investors over the last decade uh, or so, as we are seeing quite dramatic and dynamic changes in terms of consumer tests and technology. With respect to permanence, we want to ask ourselves, are there potentially technological or regulatory threats or product substitutions that might affect the industry going forward? Couple of examples. First of all, think about Sony. Sony about 20 years ago had a very dominant position in the electronic market. They released a product called Sony Walkman, which was very popular and had a huge sales across time. But there was a technological shock in the way that Walkman effectively became redundant. The iPod was released, and since that time, Sony as a business has really struggled. So that was an example of a particular technological item that was maybe at threat because of change or innovations in the technology space. And we can see the impact that had on their business. Another case study might be the question of the newspaper industry. It is argued that we might be at the end of printed newspapers era at the current point in time, and that's because we have new web-based media taking over, which is really changing the dynamics of that industry. Along with competitive structure and permanence, another question that's often considered in terms of industry evaluation is a phase of a life cycle an industry is currently in. There are different stages of life cycle of an industry, for example, the birth phase, when uh, the industry is first emerging, growth phase, which tends to be the initial period where there is a big increase in demand for the products or services within the industry, and we find significant growth in revenues, the mature growth phase uh, is when the initial change in revenue starts to slow down, but that the firm still continues to exist profitably. And then there is either a stabilization or decline. Decline could be because of some shocks such as regulatory or technological, or it could just be that the industry matures and profits are stabilizing through time. 
So once again, having a view of the industry in terms of its phase of the life cycle, also examining the prospects of that particular industry are going to be very important considerations for our valuation process and help us determine which stock to include our portfolio if we are undertaking fundamental analysis as a process of security selection. So that's the end of this learning objective. Please watch the next video for a discussion on learning objective three. Thank you.